Okay, guys, what is going on? By the way, I appreciate all of the newcomers coming from that Brett Cooper video. Welcome. I saw your comments. I changed the uh, camera angle a little bit. Tell me if you like this more. You can see my Top G poster, Free Andrew Tate. That's 93 days he was in jail, falsely accused. And as a matter of fact, today's topic is related to Andrew Tate because feminists are getting, oh, not that feminist. Okay, on today's episode of Feminist Pathology, we have women getting upset that young men are getting their lives together from a young age. Few things represent pure resentment and just mental debauchery like this. There are women that have, there are women with lives so destroyed like this, like this right here. I am 30 years old, I'm unemployed, I am living off the very end of my savings. I switched jobs three times in the past two years. I got dropped by the last podcast network that I was with. I have no 401k. I have a very small Roth IRA. I These are the women that get upset. Young men like this are learning how to make money from Andrew Tate. Now, I'm going to bring this to your attention, but I'm also going to explain to you why this is happening. Feminism tells women, in accordance with the left-wing ideology called Marxism, that accountability is oppression. The reason why accountability is oppression to them is because to take accountability for something, you must first have an individual identity. Marxism disputes the notion of an individual identity, saying that you must give up your individual identity and replace it with a group identity, that being adherence to Marxism. So when they see young men bettering themselves, they don't only see a, a reminder as to how they're wrong. They see an embodiment as to how they will be held accountable in the future for their delusion. So this, this young man, and props to this young man, I saw this about a week ago and I was very impressed obviously, along with all non-nihilistic men who are you know, trying to better themselves every single day, relentlessly, they're going to the gym, they're improving in different ways. To see, uh, to see a young kid doing this, just a phenomenal. He joined the real world Andrew Tate school and he shared this before and after picture. What do you notice about this? It's not just that he's a young kid, is that he's clearly undergone a transformation. That is objective. You can see the transformation in his facial expression and as well as his physical fitness. So the fact that there's a transformation is indisputable. Feminists and interestingly, unsurprisingly to me, people on the left are the ones that are upset at this. This is pretty much like going to a museum looking at a beautiful painting and then getting enraged that the painting is beautiful because it judges your inadequacy by comparison and renders you ugly. To people that aren't nihilistic and resentful, they get inspired when they see someone else succeeding. They don't get upset. This is like when people see Elon Musk succeeding and making billions of dollars and changing the world, they either get inspired or they get enraged as they can barely get out of bed and manage to feed themselves. Resentment is the lifeblood of the left-wing ideology. And if you're wondering, why do you keep saying it's left-wing ideology? Remember what I said about individual identity and personal accountability. The reason why the radical left is socialist, doesn't believe in capitalism, in fact hates capitalism, is because in order to, in order to engage in meritocracy and competition, you have to have the outlook that I described of being inspired and trying to improve. Not nihilism and resentfulness of other people succeeding. You have to compete, you have to be an individual. On some level, you have to interface with the objective world rather than your own feelings. Most people have experienced this at least in terms of sports. You know, if you've competed in sports, you know that it doesn't really matter how you feel. You either make the shot, you miss the shot. You either perform or you don't. You lose or you win. And you should be a good sport no matter what because everyone is playing by the same rules and they're competing against each other. Leftists are the people that get upset when they miss the shot, they take the ball and they go home. The great part about the internet though, is we get to see the people that are not only like that, but are 10 times worse than that and get furious when they see a 14 year old boy bettering his life in the program of a man that, that in their heads, I mean, they just endlessly slander. I'm gonna show you guys something interesting. This woman is so unable to cope with a young man bettering his life that she finds herself tweeting about it saying a rape cult marketed to children, what could go wrong? These women cannot admit that they were wrong. They cannot come to terms with reality because once they admit that Andrew Tate is innocent, that you know they acknowledge the, 
the evidence that came out that proved that the women made it up, that they conspired, but they were wrong and self-righteous in their wrongness, and that the architecture to their belief is insufficient. Because for women to deny that a tall, masculine, kickboxing world champion billionaire is unattractive to them, and somehow a poor representation of masculinity, they have to say the opposite of the truth. They have to deny reality on almost every level. They have to deny their own biology. They have to deny objective reality. They have to deny what their eyes tell them. This Men try to do this too. The really destroyed soy ones. Oh my gosh, no, he's not driving a $5 million car. Oh my gosh, no, he's actually a loser. Meanwhile, they can barely feed themselves. They're overweight. They can't even go to the gym once a week. Oh my gosh, yeah, Andrew Tate's really a loser. I'm a winner. To hate on men embodying reality, like this young kid is, you have to lie repeatedly. And in the culture, the ideology that's feeding people lies and telling them they are good people as a result is the left. And we know the left preys on the feminine psyche and low verbal IQ. So that's the reason why we see a lot of women just trapped in this delusional space where they're so constantly resentful. Guys, you might wonder, why are three-fourths of all women that are single and childless in their 40s and 50s on antidepressants. It's because they're constantly miserable. They're literally constantly experiencing anxiety as a result of denying reality. They walk outside, they've been told that men and women are psychologically and physically the same because anything else would be oppression. They see that men are taller and stronger than women and then they get triggered, they get upset just by walking outside. A fast car drives by them. They get reminded that masculinity exists. At the thought of masculinity existing, they realize that they've been judged because they're 45 and single. They get reminded that all the times they've lied to themselves throughout their entire 20s and 30s about how they're strong and independent boss queens who don't need no man, how they were wrong the entire time. They get triggered again. They go back and they take an antidepressant. Then they log on to X and see that a young man is already on the path to embodying reality, to bettering himself, to becoming impressive. And rather than being a supportive, encouraging um, mother, like, like she would have been if she had gotten her life together, she gets enraged. She gets upset. She tweets saying, this young man bettering himself is not making himself in the image of my feminist ideology. Oh my God, he's not becoming more feminine and soy. Why isn't he a feminist? Oh my gosh, he's listening to a tall masculine kickboxing world champion billionaire who's teaching men not to follow my ideology into the dirt. Oh my gosh, it's a rape cult. It is not a coincidence that the left-wing ideology calls objective truth oppression. The reason they call objective truth oppression, you see it constantly, is because when you acknowledge that an objective truth exists, it could be anything. It could be a water molecule is made up of two hydrogens and an oxygen. It could be that men have XY chromosomes. Once you acknowledge any objective truth, you are acknowledging that reality exists, which is actually a very big deal, psychologically speaking, and you acknowledge that you are subordinate to it instead of your ideology. That's what Marxism detests. And in its marriage with postmodernism, the philosophy of the Enlightenment, the philosophy of the Enlightenment, which got almost everything correct except for one thing, which the thing that they got wrong was that it claimed all ways of interpreting reality are equally valid. That was a mistake of postmodernism. And what Marxism does, the ideology of the left, is it combines itself with postmodernism and says that reality doesn't exist because if you say that there's an infinite number of ways of interpreting the world, then two plus two doesn't have to equal four. It can equal anything that you want it to equal. And Marxism uses this to say, we don't have to acknowledge that this young boy is on the correct path and he's better off than he was before. This is very important to understand. Now, so there's this, you know, destroyed woman. This is echoed in a lot to, you know, varying degrees in our culture. This is obviously like a 10 out of 10 in terms of, mental destruction and a destroyed feminine psyche but you know your cousin your you know the the girl down the street the the woman who's in the gender studies class and thinks that women are oppressed they are also on this scale and at some level are triggered by objective reality now let me show you just one more example i won't call it notorious because it's not that big but this is one of the anon accounts that has been tweeting about andrew tate for i kid you not two years straight. There are some accounts like this. I've seen some of them. I've engaged with some of them. When you engage with them, they completely lose their mind. They type out like 15 paragraphs underneath your post on X and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I, I've listened to the, these things and I've seen shorts taken out of context and entertained is a... Um, That's what they sound like. And they've been tweeting for years. It's very, very strange. But look how they construe Look how they construe this and also notice that they can't help themselves but tweet about this. Hmm, I wonder why. A young boy stolen from their clutches and his life is better as a result. 
No wonder they attack that. A cult for children? <laughs> Bettering yourself? Oh my gosh, that's a cult. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny because they're the ones in the cult. They're the ones tweeting about Andrew Tate nonstop for two years. Dude, even Andrew Tate's biggest fans, even the ones with posters in their house don't tweet about him every day for two years, but they somehow do. <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, you're, you're in the cult, by the way. These people are in a cult of a reality denial. It's called the left. Dylan Madden, one of Andrew Tate's friends, is known for recruiting children into Andrew Tate's alleged pyramid scheme goal. They just come up with these words. Oh my gosh, they're making money in a capitalist system, bettering lives, teaching men how to live outside the matrix in our control of femme-centric systems. A <laughs> pyramid scheme, <laughs> that's what it is. Inside the real world platform, they are constantly, <laughs> wait, there, there are constantly minors posting half-naked pictures of themselves trying to get approval from, okay, okay, okay. So. Interesting. So they're going to double down on this narrative of perversion while the left promotes drag queens in school twerking on six year olds. Okay, got it. We're going to tweet. Okay, got it. Got it. Making sense so far. I wonder if I wonder if these people have ever been inside a gym locker room. It's probably it's probably very unlikely, right? Because if they walk inside a gym, it's like, you know, a vampire walking inside a church or whatever. They just like will disintegrate or have a mental breakdown. So they've probably never been inside a, a gym. But if they have, I mean, boy, they're going to lose their mind. They're men walking around without church all the time. They're be like, oh my God, this gym's a pyramid scheme. Oh my gosh, sexual perversion. <laughs> men without church. Oh my God. We are quite literally dealing with people who cannot interface with reality. I want you to understand this. Not only that, they are enraged when you better your life. These are, these are not just haters of an individual person. These are haters of humanity. If you join the real world, I'm not in the real world, by the way, if you were to join it and you were to better your life somehow, or if you were to just get inspiration from Andrew Tate and go to the gym, better your life, work hard, take responsibility for your life, these people will get upset at you because your striving embarrasses them. It proves their ideology is a sham. It demonstrates their incompatibility with reality. The reason this is dangerous is because then they will demonize you as a result. And in so doing, they will not only prevent themselves from improving, learning, engaging with people, using free speech, thinking themselves as an individual, they will justify unpersoning you because you remind them of the truth. This is how we get to dangerous places in society. This is the place we are currently going. This is at the result of the mental pathology of the left. Oh my God, I've made bad decisions. Andrew Tate's a rapist, but I, you know, I kind of look at reality as oppression because I have no 401k anymore, but it's okay because I'm triple boosted, you know, I've listened to Hillary Clinton, she's on my refrigerator, and, you know, when I see feminists, I just think I'm a boss queen, you know, it's, I'm a boss queen, I'm single, I don't need, 